Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tech Shack for another low-quality video, this time semi-scripted. All right, so today we got a computer that I built 20 years ago that came in here for recycling. And what makes this computer so special? Well, we'll get to that right now. On the table today, we have a PC I built 20 years ago. This PC features an AMD Geode NX 1750 processor. Now, the Geode line started as a Cyrex product under the Media GX branding. AMD purchased the company in 2003 and continued to produce the lower power LX chips based on the original Media GX architecture all the way until 2021 due to demand, with its detailed data book still available on AMD's website today. However, the NX series was launched immediately after AMD's acquisition of the product. These were based on the Athlon XP mobile architecture and commonly sold embedded in micro ATX motherboards as a more powerful direct competitor to the VSC3. The VSC3 was an embedded socket 370 Intel clone that performed similar to an 800 MHz Celeron processor. The NX 1750 in this model was AMD's last NX product, and unlike the previous models, this was actually not a mobile CPU. Embedded to this board is essentially an Athlon 1800 Plus with a 50 MHz core clock reduction from 1.5 GHz to 1.45. The CPU and many higher end workloads, especially ones leveraging SSC2 instructions, could outperform a Pentium 4 at 1.8 and even 2 GHz. Now, since these were a rebrand of existing silicon from a few years earlier, it was not a high-end machine by any means. AMD had moved away from the Athlon XP and was on to the Athlon 64, and the Pentium 4 had just hit 3 GHz. However, there was a huge mid-range market that still found the Athlon XP level of performance more than adequate, and the 64-bit instruction set was still in its infancy, so almost no consumer software and operating system supported it yet, and most of those Athlon 64s were still running 32-bit operating systems and software. In fact, the first Microsoft attempt at a 64-bit Windows XP was actually built from Server 2003, not Windows. So during this time period, I built a bunch of these systems as office machines and even budget gaming PCs. The used market, the Socket 478 Pentium 4 1.8 GHz CPU sold for more than this combo did new, making them a great buy. And many of the boards like this one supported both SD RAM and DDR. This was very common during this time period since the memory controller was not on the CPU yet. It was actually still part of the motherboard chipset. But that's it for this little short history lesson. Let's take a look at the actual machine now. All right, so I sold a bunch of computers back then in, the, in this case, or a case very similar with different colors. You got the door with all the drive bays, floppy drive. All right, inside of here you have that micro ATX AMD motherboard with the AMD geode embedded CPU. You have DDR and SD RAM slots, but we have 512 megabytes of PC133 SD RAM. All right, I threw in this GeForce 2 MX it's either 200 or 400 graphics card just for running these tests but for the entirety of this pc's life it's ran on the s3 onboard graphics because amd did not own ati at this time ati was a separate company so amd did not have their own graphics division there's a really basic power supply this motherboard didn't need the supplemental four pin this was actually fairly new at the time to even require that and th this was before they even transitioned from 20 pin to 24 pin so that connector is four pins smaller, and if you ever wondered why four pins break off on some of the 24 pin connectors, that's why, for some of these legacy boards. All right, there's a 120 gigabyte IDE hard drive, a CD burner, there was a 56K modem because he still sent and received faxes, even when he moved to you know, you know cable internet, he still needed the modem for faxes. And there was an on, the onboard sound card was having driver issues with Windows XP, so we just disabled it and threw in a sound blaster card. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the specs. AMD Geode uh, 1750+, plus, uh, 512 megabytes of PC133. We have a GeForce MX400, I believe, graphics card, 56K modem, lab sound card, and of course, the, this mechanical hard drive actually still runs fine. Like, even if I go ahead and open up, look at Word instantly, Word 2003. All right, so let's go on to some benchmarks.
everything works great. I got everything torn apart though, all right? When I tore this apart, I actually realized there was a 512 and all 128 megabyte uh, module here. And then I, I remembered, um, I covered it up with tape here so you can't see at the client's name and the date, that we put a new hard drive in like two years in because we had used the hard drive in the RAM from his old computer. All right, so we had actually had a brand new 128 and then 128 that we had upgraded his old computer with. So we put both of those in here at one point. He had 256. And then when we put this in here, we upgraded one of the 128s to a 512. So this actually had 640 megabytes of RAM. I cleaned out all the slots and made sure both memory modules worked and were recognized. So uh, why is it all apart? Well, because I'm going to keep this and repurpose this for a server. This, I'd like to find a home, someone who's building like a retro um, PC based on like the Athlon XP architecture. Because again, while this is a Geo, this is essentially an Athlon XP 1800 plus embedded in the motherboard. Plus it has DDR and PC133 support with 640 megabytes of, of RAM ready to go. I will give this hard drive away, ready to go with the operating system on it and all the drivers. And this GeForce graphics card and this sound card to either like a retro YouTuber or anybody honestly who's going to actually build an XP era computer that they're going to use. Um, but that is it for this low quality video. I will see you guys in the next one.